All right, welcome back my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're gonna be talking about the density of a bacteria population, everyone's favorite thing to talk about. So basically, this density is in a circular Petri dish at a distance r centimeters from the center of the dish is given by an increasing differentiable function f, where f of r is measured in milligrams per square centimeter. Values of f of r for selected values of r are given in the table above. In problem A, we're being asked to use the data in the table to estimate F prime of 2.25, and then using correct units, interpreting the meaning of your answer in the context of this problem. We can go ahead and use the average rate of change formula for this problem. So what that means is we take F of B minus F of A over B minus A to get the average rate of change at a particular point. So for this case, since we're trying to estimate 2.25, we're gonna find where within our data table that value would sit in between. So it would sit right about here, 2.25, right between r equals two and r equals 2.5. We can go ahead and plug in 2.5 for b and two for a, and then use f of a and f of b up top in the numerator. Okay, so f of b would be 10. So 10 minus f of a is six over 2.5 minus 2 so that's 4 divided by 0 0.5 which is equal to 8 and then we need correct units for this so a way that i like to do this is i figure out what the units of the numerator are and i figure out what the units of the denominator are and then i just divide the units up top by the units down bottom so up top we're using f of b and f of a so that would be in milligrams per square centimeter milligrams per square centimeter and then down at the bottom we're using just r so that would be in centimeters so this is in milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter okay and then we're also being asked to interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of this problem we know that our r in this case is going to be 2.25 so the density of a bacteria population in a circular petri dish at 2.25 centimeters from the center of the dish the dish so remember that this is a rate of change and since our rate of change is positive we have positive eight milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter that means that the density is increasing okay is increasing at a rate of eight milligrams per centimeter squared per centimeter so that's the answer for part a let's go ahead and move on to part b I've replicated the data table here so that we don't need to, you know, scroll back up. So here is telling us that the total mass in milligrams of bacteria in the petri dish is given by the integral expression 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 4 of r times f of r. Approximate the value of this using a right Riemann sum with four sub intervals indicated by the data in the table. So I, I sort of graphed it and I left y blank just because we're going to be determining it by multiplying r times f of r. So we can go ahead and we can make these rectangles based off of the heights of the right value of our graphs. Whereas if this was a left Riemann sum, we would be using the left value of our graph. So it would be something like this instead. So uh, you can see there's kind of a difference to make sure you're doing your right Riemann sum. This r f of r is going to be the height of our rectangles. So I kind of left out the tick marks on the y-axis, but this is gonna be r f of r. And then um, on the x-axis, we're gonna have the width of our, of our rectangles. We can go ahead and put that two pi out there. And then we're gonna start calculating the area under the curve using the right Riemann sum. So from this first rectangle, our width is going to be one minus zero, right? I'm just grabbing that from our data table. So that's gonna be one. So we're gonna have one times, what's our height gonna be? Our height is gonna be r times f of r. So at this point, we're looking at the r is one. 
and the f of r is 2, okay, this height is going to be 1 times 2. So that is for r equals 1. Then we need to do that for r equals 2, r equals 2.5, and r equals 4. The next rectangle we're looking at is going to be 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 as our width, so that's another 1. So 1 times. Then we're going to take a look at the height of our rectangle. So that is going to be r times f of r. So that's going to be 2 times 6. That's this height here. Next rectangle, we kind of drew my... my thing a little off but this should be like that where it's at now two and a half so we're our next rectangles width is two and a half minus two so that's 0 0.5 0 0.5 times what's the height here it's going to be r so 2.5 times f of r so that's going to be times times 10 and then last but not least, we have our last rectangle. So that's going to be from 4 to 2.5. So the width here is 4 minus 2.5, which is 1.5. So that's going to be 1.5 times, what's the height here? Well, it's going to be r, 4, times f of r, so 18. And then, so we have all of these rectangles. And to find the area under the curve, we're going to actually want to add them all up. Okay, so we have all this math here. This is going to end up being 2 pi times 134.5. So that's going to be 269 pi. This is a total mass in milligrams, so we can add in our unit that. And that's our final answer for this problem. Notice you would get a significantly different answer if you had used the left Riemann sum. So make sure you're using the correct Riemann sum, the correct number of subintervals. Otherwise, you're going to get the wrong answer. All right, moving on. Is the approximation found in part B an overestimate or underestimate of the total mass of bacteria in the Petri dish? Explain your reasoning. To answer this problem, we can go ahead and go back to the problem where it says that the function is increasing and differentiable. So that should give us a really good indicator of whether this is an overestimate or underestimate. So because f of r is strictly increasing and r is strictly increasing, r times f of r is also strictly increasing. So if we take a look at our subintervals that we had in the last problem, you'll notice that the actual area under the curve is down here, but we have estimated the area up here as well. So just by the definition of a right Riemann sum on an increasing function, we would say that we have an overestimate. Okay, we overestimated the total mass of bacteria because we used a right Riemann. Is that right? Right Riemann, nice. Right, because we use a right Riemann sum on a strictly increasing function. All right, next problem. The density of bacteria in the Petri dish for one is less than or equal to R is less than or equal to four is modeled by the function G defined by this here. For what value of K between one and four is G of K equal to the average value of G of R on the interval one is less than or equal to R is less than or equal to four. All right, so with this problem, we're gonna to wanna to use the average value of function. So that's gonna be one over B minus A times the integral from A to B of some function f of x, say for example dx. So for this problem, we can go ahead and plug in four as our b and one as our a. So one over four minus one, the integral from one to four of g of r. So in that case, that'd be two minus 16 cosine of 1.57 r, or that cubed dr. 
this is a calculator problem, so go ahead and just plug that into your calculator. So nine, we get 9.875795-ish, so on and so forth. So, so this is our average value of g of r on the interval. We need to find where g of k is equal to this value. So we can go ahead and just plug that into our calculator, work backwards, and we can get that k is equal to 2.497. So just as a gut check as well, you'll notice it asked us to keep it within the bounds 1 and 4, and you'll notice that 2.497 is between 1 and 4, so we have make sure that this is a valid answer. Hopefully that helps you out with these AP Calculus problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll get back to you, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.